my name is Hannah. Welcome back to my channel. I have some books that I am excited to talk about today, so let's jump into those. Now, I absolutely adored the two books by T.J. Klune, The House in the Cerulean Sea and Under the Whispering Door. Those were excellent books for me. I was very excited to see that he had a new book in the lives of puppets and I was really excited to pick it up but then I heard some other book reviews on booktube that said it really didn't live up to the other two and I thought I don't know if I can handle that kind of disappointment so it went off of my to be read list for a while and then this last week I thought you know I'd really like to just give it a try. So I finally got around to the book In the Lives of Puppets. And this is a futuristic book that is taking place after the robot takeover of the world. And it is also a futuristic retelling of Pinocchio. So you have a robot who starts having these emotions and feeling lonely. And so he obtains a young human boy to love and to raise. Now, I thought that the connections to Pinocchio were kind of fun and the story was interesting. I honestly had a spectacular time with this book. I enjoyed it. I had a great time. But do you know why I had a great time? It's because I had lowered expectations. I think if you went into this book thinking it was going to be as good as the other two, you would be really disappointed. But if you go in thinking that this book is probably not going to be that great, you're going to be pleasantly surprised. It had its moments. There were some things that I'm like, I didn't want to think about robots like that. There were parts of it that I spent a bit of time trying to figure out, okay, how does this connect to Pinocchio? What does it mean since it's human and not and real boy? What does it mean that this person's the one made of wood? Who's Pinocchio? I was trying to make all the connections and some of it just, I don't know what it was trying to do, but it was fine. It was kind of cute. So this wasn't a bad book. Was it as good as the others? No, but if you go in with lower of expectations, it's like a four out of five stars. I had a fun time. I don't think there was anything life-changing in it where I'm like, oh, it warmed my heart and made my life better, but it was a good time. I had a good time with it. So this one wasn't bad. As you know, if you've watched some of my last few videos, is I went back on another David Sedaris kick and once again, searched the library for any of his books that I have not read or listened to. And I found Squirrel Seeks Chipmunk by David Sedaris. And this is basically a book of fables. It is only animal stories and they all have kind of a zingy one-liner moral by the end. At first, I wasn't sure what to expect with this because they're all animal stories. I thought, well, is this like a kid's book? What is it? Definitely not a kid's book. It had some disturbing elements, but all of it I thought was so funny. I was busting up. I had such a good time with this book. I thought that the little almost dad joke one-liners at the end were hilarious. I was laughing so hard out loud the entire time I was going through this book. I just thought the stories were so weird but quirky and delightful and I was really excited about it. Then I went to go put it on Goodreads and I saw that this is David Sedaris is probably one of his lowest rated books. I went and looked at the reviews and the reviews are hilarious if you loved the book because they're all this was so dark and disturbing. I was so depressed reading this. This isn't the David Sedaris I know and love. I can't handle this. This was awful. I had to put it down. Why would he write things? This wasn't even funny. And I'm like, is my humor broken? Because I was busting up. I thought this was just, you know, beautiful. I think if you like David Sedaris for his personal essays, maybe go into this a little warily, but if you like some of his a little bit off the wall fictional pieces and fictional essays he throws in, you're gonna like this. It was funny and dark, but 
very relatable to actual human experiences and I thought he did a really good job. This is definitely a different David Sedaris book. It's not just a collection of essays, some fictional, some real life, some journal entries compiled together into a book. This was a book with a mission to tell these little things that humans do to each other in these fables with animals. I think it might be up there with some of my favorite David Sedaris books. Now, if you've never read David Sedaris, do I suggest you start with this one? No, you'll probably be so confused as to why I would even say I like this, but this is, I don't know, my 12th or 13th David Sedaris book. I recommend it um, with the caveat that maybe you'll read it and think what is wrong with this person because apparently there were enough people that thought that this book was awful and I just adored, I adored this book, just laughed out loud the whole time. Now for just a classic, I read the book Holes by Lewis Sacker to my daughter and I am in love with that book. It is one of those books from childhood that just has stuck with me and I love how it weaves in the different narratives to all come together. I think that's really cool in a kid's book because a lot of times I feel like kid's books stick to one or two timelines and this one really knows how to weave a good story and it's just there's something classic about it. The no good dirty rotten pig stealing great great grandfather storyline and our main character Stanley Yelnats who is sentenced to go to Camp Green Lake because he is wrongly convicted of stealing shoes and also the history of Camp Green Lake and what happened before the lake dried up. I think the weaving of these stories was just beautiful and the friendships that Stanley makes along the way are wonderful and it's hard for me to look at this with any sort of critical eye because I loved it so much growing up. So reading it out loud, it only took a couple of days to read it out loud because I was so excited that I'm like, could we please maybe read another chapter? I want to read another chapter. Um, I was the one kind of pushing it because I was having such a good time and my daughters, both of them really liked it. The four-year-olds would sit down and listen to the story and ask, is Stanley going to be okay? What's happening? And so, I thought it was a great read aloud book and I adore the movie. If you've watched the movie, it is one of the most faithful book adaptations that you can get. Are there some corny cringy parts in it? Sure, but it is such a faithful adaptation to the book and it's got Sigourney Weaver and Shia LaBeouf and I love that movie. So getting to read the book with my kids and then watch the movie was just a joyful experience the past week. So I highly recommend this as a read aloud book. It was delightful. For the book that didn't work well for me, I ran out of books to read because my TBR list is all backed up with the holds of the library. So I found on Goodreads this recommendation for the book Sign Here by Claudia Lux and the description drew me in. I thought, okay, I could maybe get on board with this. It says, a darkly humorous, surprisingly poignant, and utterly gripping debut novel about a guy who works in hell, literally, and is on the cusp of a big promotion if only he can get one more member of the wealthy Harrison family to sell their soul. And I thought, this might be really interesting. You can get some humorous moments, kind of a, a quirky demon drama, and this family and see a, when does somebody get desperate enough that they would sell their soul to change their circumstances? And so I thought that the premise sounded really interesting. And the book, you end up getting the portion where you are in hell with the demon guy, and then you get the family and what's happening in their lives. Those are your two timelines. Now, what didn't work for me was the demon timeline. It wasn't really funny at all. I just was waiting for the darkly humorous, quirky fun. Honestly, I just was bored by that whole timeline. It didn't do much for the book. It didn't give me anything that was really meaningful on that side and any of the story or background into that portion of the book was boring and had nothing to do with anything else and kind of confusing at points. I just didn't get it. And then 
the story about the Harrisons and their family was pretty engaging and got you involved, but also I spent so much time trying to figure out how it connected to the other timeline that I feel like I didn't really have the opportunity to get as invested in those characters as if it maybe just stuck with that. And so I just don't think this worked for me. And I think some of it is the fault of the marketing of the book because it was more of a family drama than a quirky, darkly humorous demon story. I think it was a different story than what I was expecting, but I just, it was fine. It was very readable, but by the end I'm like, why? Why did I bother? So this one was not my favorite. And that is what I have read the past week or so. I will be back soon with another book wrap up, so stay tuned. And let me know in the comments down below, what are you reading right now? What should I pick up next? Especially if my holds keep getting backed up at the library. Thank you for watching and I will see you all on the next one.